Just a couple other little tidbits of orbital motion to consider. Let's start with Earth and a satellite going around Earth with a speed v. Now this satellite is close to the surface. We'll consider it orbiting at the surface of the Earth. Gravitational tug is perpendicular, which is a very important consideration. And that is the force that keeps it in orbit. And the orbit is circular when the speed is rad rg, as we've discovered by setting fc equal to fg. We also discovered it's square root of gm over r. So those are the two results we got in the past. Now if you plug the numbers in, you find out it's 8 kilometers per second, or 5 to 6 miles every second. And then it returns, okay, so it goes around this whole thing and comes back to where it started. And it's a constant 8 kilometers per second. And we can understand that because the motion is perpendicular to the force, or vice versa, and that only changes the direction, not the speed itself. Well, it becomes more elliptical the faster the initial speed is, but at a particular value of 11.2 kilometers per second, or about 8 miles a second, the orbit becomes parabolic. At that speed, the satellite escapes forever and never returns again. It takes infinite time to move infinitely far away and arrive at a speed of zero. Of course, you can't replicate those conditions, but that's precisely the conditions we're talking about. <clears throat> now, Kepler, he thought a special force is needed to keep the planet moving, and that force is probably greater the closer the planet is to the sun because it's moving faster there. Now, Kepler really didn't know the dynamics of motion so much, what causes motion. He was a very good mathematician and he understood the description of motion, came up with his three laws. Newton informed us more about the underlying cause of all this. But what's really going on with an with a orbit, with a planet going around the sun? Just look at the forces a little bit to make sure we see this clearly. So close to the sun, indeed, we are moving very fast. The fastest motion right toward the sun. Also the strongest force, which I have piercing the sun just because I want to show the force vector being large at that point. Corresponding to a large speed, which requires a large centripetal force. Now on the other side, at the aphelion, as opposed to the perihelion here, the motion is slowest and the force is smallest as well. They go hand in hand. But what about as it's continuing to move around, the satellite finds itself here moving in this direction. The force is always directly toward the sun. But now we notice that it's not perpendicular anymore. If we consider the perpendicular part, that's the part that changes the, the direction but it's the parallel part, the tangential part, that changes the speed. So since this part is acting in the same direction as the motion, it's changing the speed, in this case increasing it. That's why it goes faster and faster until it arrives at its perihelion point. On the other side, coming around, we have the same idea. There's the motion with the force. Part of the force is going to be acting away from the direction of motion. Where's the perpendicular? And here's the parallel away from the direction of motion, opposite the motion, okay, slowing it down. So the perpendicular does not change the orbit speed, but the parallel either speeds it up or slows it down, and that's what causes these speeds to actually change as it makes its orbit. And notice, of course, you don't need anything at the other focal point here. Nothing's there. Lastly, how fast will a ball hit the Earth when it's dropped from infinity? Now for this thought experiment, we're going to remove everything else from the universe. There's nothing else but the ball and the Earth. And in fact, the Earth has been stripped of its atmosphere, so that's not going to affect the results either. So the question is, how fast will the ball hit dropping dropping it from infinity. And if you're concerned about it not moving at infinity, then give it ever so slightly a nudge to get it going. And, um, you know, infinity is a slippery idea. So we can think of actual, but the math 
you know, is consistent with that idea. And we actually have a precise answer to the question. So just as a little basis, and maybe some hints, you know, we start with V0. And the ball goes up and down from the surface of the Earth. We know, we've proven in the past in our dis discussion of kinematics, <clears throat> that the initial speed and the final speed are the same. So whatever you speed you throw a ball up, it comes down at the same speed. So as you continue to throw the ball higher and higher, faster and faster, it goes higher and higher, but it keeps coming down at the same speed that you launched it. So what if you go all the way to, inf what, what if you now drop it from infinity? What would be the speed that it hits the earth, the surface of the earth? You really have all the information here to answer the question. Now somebody might think it's, you know, you can't say terminal velocity because there's no atmosphere, as I mentioned. You also can't say infinity because nothing can reach infinite speed. You might think maybe it's the speed of light, it's 186,000 miles per second. But that would be incorrect as well, uh, not just from the standpoint that nothing can actually approach, can get to the speed of light, but there's a more fundamental energy concern here, which even though you don't understand at the moment, doesn't matter, because if you realize that as you throw a ball higher and higher, it comes down at the same speed, we've already discovered the speed we need to throw this at so it escapes forever, okay, and actually never returns, which means it eventually gets to infinity and stops. And that speed was the 11.2 kilometers per second. So that's our answer, 11.2 kilometers per second. And at that speed, out at infinity, quote unquote, you're accelerating toward the Earth, and the accel most of the acceleration occurs when you're pretty close to the Earth. And all it can arrive at is 11.2, or about 8 miles per second. And that's pretty fast, but it's a whole lot less than the speed of light or something else, you might think. And um, so that is, a, that is a limitation of the energy, conservation of energy, which we'll get to later on as well. So with that, I will bid you... So long until we meet again with the next topic.